Hey, welcome back to Top Flight Family. In this video, I am comparing Kalahari versus Great Wolf Lodge. These are both indoor water park resorts in the Poconos, Pennsylvania. My name is Carmen Signovi, and if you're new to our channel, we are all about fostering togetherness as a family by experiencing new adventures here in New York City where we live and all around the world because we love to travel. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video. So I am going to stack Great Wolf Lodge against Kalahari in six different categories. So for each, I'm gonna tell you which resort I think does a better job. So at the end, we'll see which of these resorts dominates. And then I will also let you know which of these resorts I think is better for if you have younger kids versus if you have bigger kids. The first category of comparison is the check-in in process. The check-in process is where a Great Wolf Lodge really shines because these check-in lines can be kind of long, um, but Great Wolf Lodge makes sure that during the prime check-in hours, there are always lots of activities and shows and things going on in the lobby to keep kids busy while their parents are lining up. So there are mascots that you can take pictures with, there are little shows going on, um, so the kids stay entertained. Kalahari, on the other hand, has a really beautiful lobby. It's much more sort of bright and inviting than Great Wolf Lodges is, in my opinion. Um, however, there are no real sort of organized or unorganized activities for the kids. So the kids kind of have to just line up with their parents while they're checking in. So when it comes to the check-in process, Great Wolf Lodge wins. The second category for comparison are accommodations. For Great Wolf Lodge, we actually went there last year. Um, Sean really wanted to go there for her birthday, so we went and we booked a grizzly bear suite. And it was us and uh, one other family. The suite was just very outdated. Um, it just was kind of dark and gloomy in there. Everything looked really cheap. I will say that it looks like from their website, Great Wolf has done a renovation since the time that we went there. So looks like the rooms are looking a little better. Um, but overall, the feeling was like a little bit dark and shabby. The other thing is that I was really shocked by the prices. Um, the Grizzly Bear Suite is a two bed, two bath suite. Um, and the one bedroom has a is a master bedroom that has one queen bed. The other is a second bedroom that has two queen beds. And then there's also a pull out couch in the uh, living room. So it can fit a lot of people. Um, however, for the seven of us, so it was four adults, three kids, um, it came out to over $900, which to me, it's a little crazy because for that, like we could stay at the Four Seasons. <laughs> so I am kind of amazed by the pricing of some of these indoor water park resorts. These are really sort of five star hotel prices, um, but you're getting a three star hotel room. I have heard that there are a lot of deals that you can get. I know Great Wolf Lodge all, is always running Groupons. And I've also heard that um, if you can get a big group together, you can save a lot on a group rate. Unfortunately, we didn't have access to any of those deals when we went, um, but yeah, it was pretty pricey, um, especially considering what you get. The master bedroom, it didn't even have a king bed. It was a queen bed and it was a very small queen bed. So it was just pretty uncomfortable. So when we say at Kalahari, that was earlier this summer and we had an African queen suite, which was almost the same setup as in Kalahari. So it's also a two bed, two bath suite. However, this master bedroom actually had a king size bed. So it was much more comfortable to sleep in. Overall, also the room just felt much more upscale and luxe, like just the quality of the sheets, the quality of the pillows, everything just felt a little bit less cheap. That said, it wasn't a perfect stay by any means. Um, we had some major issues with the housekeeping department. Uh, we had forgotten to pack toothbrushes for the girls. And so we called twice it, it, during the evening to see if somebody could bring up toothbrushes. Nobody came. Then the next morning we called back and said, hey, no one came last night. Can you guys make sure you bring toothbrushes because we're about to head out. And we called twice and again, nobody came. <laughs> so if you have any housekeeping needs, you may not get uh, much of a response, unfortunately. Um, so just keep that in mind. For the Kalahari stay, we were actually hosted by the property, so we didn't pay out of pocket. However, I looked up how much it would have been if we had the same amount of people as we had at Great Wolf, which was three, uh, four adults and three kids. Um, staying at the African Queen Suite. And um, looks like the prices came out to about 600 or 650, which is way less than what we paid at Great Wolf. Um, and the quality of the room was so much better. So I'm kind of shocked at how big of a disparity there was in pricing. So when it comes to accommodations, Kalahari definitely wins. So the next category is the water park itself. 
The first thing that you'll notice about Great Wolf Lodge is the intense smell of chlorine. As soon as we walked into the lobby, not even into the water park, you could already smell the chlorine. So compared to Kalahari, Great Wolf definitely has a much smaller indoor water park. One good thing, however, is that you can't buy day passes to the indoor water park. In other words, you have to be a guest uh, with a room at the resort in order to use it. So some people feel like this makes uh, the water park less crowded. Um, however, since Great Wolf is so much smaller than Kalahari when it comes to, to the water park area, I didn't really notice a huge difference, but you know, that's something that you may notice. So Great Wolf, as far as I can tell, has only five slides, like actual water slides. There are certainly other areas of the water park with splash pads and sort of like smaller little slides for younger kids, um, but five, I think, real water slides and they are double barrel drop, hydro plunge, coyote cannon, river canyon run, and Alberta Falls. Now Kalahari on the other hand has actually become the largest indoor water park in all of the United States as of their last expansion. So they have 220,000 square feet of indoor water park. Another thing that makes it different is that uh, Kalahari also has an outdoor water park, which is great if you're going to the resort in the summer. Um, you know, there's tons of fun stuff to do indoors, but since the weather is nice, you might as well take advantage and actually do some stuff outdoors as well. So they have several different areas, some nice pools. Um, so if you want to kind of go and actually get a tan, <laughs> that's something uh, that's an option for you. Now, one thing about Kalahari is that they do allow people to buy day passes. So there will be people at the water park who are not staying uh, as guests in a hotel room. I didn't particularly notice that that made it more crowded since Kalahari is so much bigger. Um, but again, you know, if that's something that bothers you, then just know that that is the case. So from what I could count, Kalahari has 14 different water slides. They have the Anaconda, the Barreling Baboon, Cheetah Race, Elephant's Trunk, Kenya Corkscrew, Rippling Rhino, Sahara Sidewinders, Screaming Hyena, Tanzanian Twister, The Smoke That Thunders, Victoria Falls, Wild Wildebeest, Zigzag, Zebra, and Zimbabwe Zipper. So it's a lot. And also compared to Great Wolf, I would say that m there are many more slides that are more on sort of the extreme or thrilling side. Um, so it's great for adults or really thrill-seeking kids. Um, whereas the slides at Great Wolf, I think are a little bit more sort of like easy to moderate. So in addition to the 14 slides, there are also tons of other attractions at Kalahari uh, in, the, in the water park section, including, of course, a lazy river. They also have a flow rider, which is the surf simulator machine. Um, they have different uh, areas, uh, splash pads for younger kids, smaller slides. Um, so there's just a lot of variety. Oh, and there's also a wave pool. Um, although Great Wolf has a wave pool as well. And I will say that I don't know if it's just something that happened when we happened to be there, but it seemed like the wave pool at Great Wolf was more like wavy, <laughs> like there were more waves happening. Whereas when we were at Kalahari, it kind of seemed like the wave pool, like there wasn't much happening. I don't know if it seemed like they only turned on the waves at one point and then it kind of stopped. Um, so the wave pool at Kalahari is larger, but it kind of seemed like it wasn't as active. So when it comes to water park facilities, definitely Kalahari wins. The next category we're going to compare is dining. I will admit that when we went to Great Wolf, I was expecting the food to be really horrible and basically inedible. However, it actually wasn't as bad as I expected. Um, that said, there is really only one real like sit down kind of restaurant at Great Wolf Lodge in the Poconos, and that is the buffet restaurant. All the other dining options are more or less like cafeteria style takeout things where you bring a tray and maybe you get a pizza or hot dog or a burger. Um, so there's really only one kind of like nice-ish sit down restaurant, which is a buffet. Kalahari on the other hand has over 10 different restaurants or bars or dessert shops. I mean, there's so many options there, including many, many, many different sit down options. So some of the highlighted restaurants um, are B Lux, which is kind of like an upscale burger joint. There is Double Cut, which is a steakhouse, and then also Sortino's Italian Kitchen, which is like a high-end Italian restaurant. But other than that, there's also more casual restaurants. There's a great uh, buffet restaurant that serves both breakfast and lunch, possibly dinner as well, I'm not sure about that. Um, but there are just tons of dining options at Kalahari. Now, I will say that I found the food to be just okay at Kalahari. Um, I think based on the presentation and sort of the packaging of the menu, 
menus and the decor of the restaurant, I expected the food to taste better. Um, I think they need to work on the quality a little bit, um, but definitely there are way more options than uh, Great Wolf. And also all of the options I think are much more kind of upscale and a little bit more trying to cater to foodies. So when it comes to dining, Kalahari is a clear winner. The next category we're gonna compare are the arcades and gaming aspects. So Great Wolf definitely has a much smaller arcade than Kalahari. However, um, the good thing about Great Wolf is that they have a lot of attractions that are specifically catered to younger kids. Um, so for example, they have like a mini bowling alley, they have mini golf. So if you're traveling with like toddlers or preschoolers, I think that um, Great Wolf rather uh, would have some nice arcade options or gaming options for your kids. So Kalahari, on the other hand, has a massive, massive arcade. So in addition to the huge arcade, they have lots of other experiences like mini bowling, blacklight mini golf, 7D motion theater, virtual reality experiences, and even escape rooms. So there are just many more arcade games and then also just many more kind of gaming experiences overall. So when it comes to arcades and games, Kalahari definitely wins. So the sixth and final category is other activities. So Great Wolf definitely has an advantage here. Um, one of the th things that's really popular at Great Wolf among kids is all of the magic quest and shadow quest uh, experiences. So it's a little bit hard to explain what this is, but essentially you buy a magic wand and you activate it. And then um, throughout the resort, there are like different things that you can tap on and the th objects will sort of come to life or give you a clue. And the, I think there is like some kind of system to it where you can like win points and there's an eventual goal and things like that. Um, we couldn't really totally figure it out to be honest. Um, and we didn't also spend a lot of time there. But there was, when we were at Great Wolf, there was this one little boy who was like super, super into it. And he was giving my daughters a lot of tips. So it seems like there is definitely kind of a following that uh, these magic wand experiences have. The so Great Wolf definitely dominates in this area because they have a lot of other activities going on. So they have a lot of shows throughout the day. Um, they have like a story time where kids can come to the lobby and in their pajamas and listen to a story. Um, there's also an outdoor area where there's an outdoor ropes course. There's also some outdoor fire pits. Um, so that outdoor aspect is something that I don't think Kalahari really has. Um, so in terms of other activities, Great Wolf definitely has a lot and a lot of them are geared towards younger kids. So at Kalahari, I would say in terms of other activities, the main thing that they have is the Adventurers Club. And my daughters actually enjoy this a lot. So this is a, a part of the resort where you can go and do different arts and crafts projects. Um, you can actually buy like a little passport that will give you uh, a certain number of free activities that you can do. And then there's some that you would pay a premium for. So the types of activities that are available are things like making slime or painting ceramics or making like tie dye shirts. So when it comes to other activities, Great Wolf Lodge definitely wins. Okay, so let's tally up our final score. Great Wolf Lodge has two points and Kalahari has four points, which makes Kalahari the overall winner in my book. Now, I think you can already guess which resort I think is better for younger kids, and it's definitely Great Wolf Lodge. So if you have infants or toddlers or preschool age kids, I think Great Wolf Lodge is a good option because it just overall kind of feels more warm and cuddly. There's like, the whole theme of it is sort of, you know, bears and a forest lodge. And there's so many of these like little activities and shows and characters that little kids can relate to. Um, also a lot of the games and even in the water park, a lot of the attractions are geared towards younger kids. So if you have little ones, Great Wolf Lodge is a great choice. Now, if your kids are older, elementary, school age and up, then I think they are gonna have much more fun at Kalahari um, because there's just, you know, bigger and more exciting rides, cooler attractions, more fun games. Um, so Kalahari is definitely a better choice for older kids and also for, you know, those adults that are young at heart. Okay, I have linked uh, the next video in this series below here so you can check that out. But in the meantime, leave a comment and let me know which one do you like better, Great Wolf Lodge or Kalahari and why? I'd love to hear your thoughts.